Part 1. Listen to the full conversation. Hey, have you read The Psychology of Money yet? Yeah, I just finished it. It was really interesting. What's the main lesson you took from it? Well, one big lesson is that it's not about how much you make, but how you manage what you have. Yeah, I heard that too. Can you explain more? Sure. It means that even if you earn a lot, if you spend it all and don't save or invest wisely, you won't be financially secure. That makes sense. What else did you learn? The book talks about the power of compounding. Small, consistent investments can grow over time. So, starting early is important, right? Exactly. Starting early can make a huge difference in the long run. I also read something about the importance of avoiding big losses. Can you explain that? Of course. It's about protecting what you have. If you lose a big chunk of your savings, it's hard to recover. So, risk management is crucial? Yes, it's about balancing risk and reward. Did the book mention anything about our emotions and money? Yes, it did. It talks about how our emotions can lead to impulsive decisions and how we should try to stay calm and rational when it comes to money. That's easier said than done, right? Absolutely. It takes practice, but it's important for financial well-being. What about budgeting and tracking expenses? The book stresses the importance of knowing where your money goes. Budgeting helps you control your spending. Sounds like a good idea. Did the book have any practical tips? Yeah, it suggested automating savings and investments, so you don't even have to think about it. That's convenient. Did it mention anything about investing? Yes, it emphasized the value of long-term investing and diversifying your investments to spread risk. So, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Right, that's the idea. Spread your investments across different assets. Did you find any stories or examples in the book? Yeah, there are plenty of real-life stories that illustrate the principles discussed. That makes it more relatable, I suppose. Definitely. It's easier to understand with practical examples. Did the book offer any advice on dealing with debt? It mentioned that not all debt is bad, like a mortgage for a home. But high-interest debt, like credit card debt, should be avoided. Got it. So, prioritize paying off high-interest debt. Yes, that's a good strategy for financial stability. Did it talk about setting financial goals? Yes, it encourages setting clear financial goals to stay motivated and focused. Sounds like a great read. I'll have to check it out. You definitely should. It's a book that can change your perspective on money. Thanks for sharing these insights. I appreciate it. You're welcome. It's always good to talk about money and financial wisdom. Practice session. Let's practice together. I'll go first. Hey, have you read The Psychology of Money yet? What's the main lesson you took from it? Yeah, I heard that too. Can you explain more? That makes sense. What else did you learn? So, starting early is important, right? I also read something about the importance of avoiding big losses. 
Can you explain that? So, risk management is crucial? Did the book mention anything about our emotions and money? That's easier said than done, right? What about budgeting and tracking expenses? Sounds like a good idea. Did the book have any practical tips? That's convenient. Did it mention anything about investing? So, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Did you find any stories or examples in the book? That makes it more relatable, I suppose. Did the book offer any advice on dealing with debt? Got it. So, prioritize paying off high-interest debt. Did it talk about setting financial goals? Sounds like a great read. I'll have to check it out. Thanks for sharing these insights. I appreciate it. Now, let's switch the role. You go first. Yeah, I just finished it. It was really interesting. Well, one big lesson is that it's not about how much you make, but how you manage what you have. Sure, it means that even if you earn a lot, if you spend it all and don't save or invest wisely, you won't be financially secure. The book talks about the power of compounding. Small, consistent investments can grow over time. Exactly. Starting early can make a huge difference in the long run. Of course, it's about protecting what you have. If you lose a big chunk of your savings, it's hard to recover. Yes, it's about balancing risk and reward. Yes, it did. It talks about how our emotions can lead to impulsive decisions and how we should try to stay calm and rational when it comes to money. Absolutely. It takes practice, but it's important for financial well-being. The book stresses the importance of knowing where your money goes. Budgeting helps you control your spending. Yeah, it suggested automating savings and investments, so you don't even have to think about it.
Yes, it emphasized the value of long-term investing and diversifying your investments to spread risk. Right, that's the idea. Spread your investments across different assets. Yeah, there are plenty of real-life stories that illustrate the principles discussed. Definitely. It's easier to understand with practical examples. It mentioned that not all debt is bad, like a mortgage for a home. But high interest debt, like credit card debt, should be avoided. Yes, that's a good strategy for financial stability. Yes, it encourages setting clear financial goals to stay motivated and focused. You definitely should. It's a book that can change your perspective on money. You're welcome. It's always good to talk about money and financial wisdom.